Review. Immersion Pulmonary Edema by Brian Harper. Pulmonary edema is an abnormal leakage of fluid from the bloodstream into the alveoli, the microscopic air sacs in the lungs. It most often is the result of heart failure or heart problems. But sometimes pulmonary edema is observed in swimmers and divers with no underlying medical cause being apparent. This condition, called immersion pulmonary edema, represents a rapid onset of shortness of breath, cough, and sometimes blood-tinged sputum. Because the fluid builds up in the air-containing spaces of the lungs, it also interferes with gas exchange and may resemble drowning. The important difference is that the obstructing fluid comes from within the body rather than from inhaling the surrounding water. The Dan Medical Information Department receives several calls each month with divers reporting symptoms suggestive of immersion pulmonary edema, or IPE. Anyone who experiences sudden shortness of breath or persistent cough while diving should abort the dive in a safe manner and breathe 100% oxygen at the surface. Further diving should be postponed until it can be examined by a medical practitioner. IPE often resolves very quickly, but it can recur and therefore it is important to seek medical advice. Why does it happen? Three experts weigh in on this question. Douglas Ebersol. IPE is an uncommon condition, first reported in 1989. It was originally described in cold water diving and called cold-induced pulmonary edema, but it's now been reported in warm water diving as well. An absence of chest pain helps differentiate IPE from, for instance, pulmonary decompression sickness. The exact mechanism is not known, but it's thought to be due to a combination of increased hydrostatic pressure on the pulmonary blood vessels that occur during immersion and the presence of a gradient between the hydrostatic pressure at the mouth and the level of the chest, especially when the dive is upright. Additionally, diving causes increased negative pressure in the alveoli due to the denser breathing gas that is used, particularly with a poorly tuned regulator. Immersion in water causes a number of physiological effects, including a rapid redistribution of blood from the legs, which increases the blood volume in the thorax by about 700 milliliters. This additional blood causes an increased pressure in the right side of the heart by 16 to 18 millimeters of mercury, about a 30% increase in cardiac output and a slight increase in blood pressure. Divers with conditions such as hypertension or underlying cardiovascular disease, and especially those with weakened cardiac function, would be less able to tolerate these changes and therefore more likely to develop IPE. No large studies have been performed, but when reviewing what has been written, it seems that a high percentage of subjects had high blood pressure or cardiovascular disease. Most of the cases were also reported in women. Alfred Bouvet. There are several scenarios that may provoke IPE. High intensity surface swimming causes it, and this has been reported in triathletes and US Navy dive seals. Divers get IPE when swimming on the bottom without clear evidence of stress. In some cases, the diver relates tight breathing regulators, and in others, there's no evidence of stress or equipment problems at all. In some cases, the diver relates it to tight breathing regulators, but in others, there's no evidence of stress or equipment problems at all. In most cases, cardiac evaluation is also normal. Reduced relaxed, that is diastolic, pressures, usually the result of long-standing hypertension. Reduced diastolic relaxation, in other words, the long-standing results of hypertension, can increase the chances of developing IPE. Measurements of both systolic, that is the contraction, and diastolic, that is the relaxation phase of cardiac pumping, can readily be obtained by a so-called echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart. 
IPE is not a manifestation of decompression sickness and does not require recompression. The treatment is oxygen and diuretics to remove the water from the lungs. Pete with tooking. We don't know and this is the dilemma. There have been multiple theories but none seem to be completely satisfactory. One theory suggests it's prolonged immersion in cold water that causes the peripheral blood vessels to constrict and shunt blood back to the heart and central circulation, which then leads to fluid leaking into the lungs. However, one would think that otherwise fit individuals would be able to compensate for this. Not to mention, IPE has been documented to occur in warm water as well. Another theory, somewhat similar to the first, is that hydrostatic pressure from the water causes blood to be shunted to the core. Yet again, one might think that the volume would not be enough to overwhelm a young, healthy cardiovascular system. And none of these theories explain why IPE can occur in an individual during a dive that seems to be very, very relaxed. Another theory suggests IPE is a result of respiratory mechanics. The idea is that strong, forced inhalation against resistance, in other words, breathing hard against a snorkel or regulator, may actually cause the lungs to respond by leaking fluid into the air spaces. This may explain why young, healthy swimmers with strong lungs can develop IPE, especially during strenuous swims. There may also be a genetic component to IPE, in other words, some individuals may have the potential to develop it, whereas others don't. Although there may be a genetic predisposition, I have seen and treated cases where individuals return to full dive duty and never had further problems. So, under what circumstances can someone who experienced IPE return to diving? Bouvet. One problem is excess hydration coupled with rapid onset of heavy swimming exercise on the surface. In triathletes who develop IPE, excess hydration and rapid onset extreme exercise while immersed should be avoided. Military divers are instructed to avoid overhydration before high energy swimming. Divers are advised to ensure normal regulator function and not to use regulators that allow breathing resistance to be increased. The majority of divers can return to diving with these proper precautions and confirmation that their heart functions are normal. Ebersol. Unfortunately, we know very little about the chance of reoccurrence after a single episode, but there does seem to be a spontaneous recovery and it doesn't always reoccur. Whether or not a diver returns to diving after an episode of IPE should be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. The decision should be based on the physical condition of the diver history of hypertension or cardiovascular disease and the type of diving considered. Obviously shallow warm water diving in young healthy divers would suggest less risk than an older middle-aged individual with multiple medical problems. Wutuki. An otherwise healthy individual with a single episode of IPE may return to diving once all symptoms have resolved. They should take the precautions we've mentioned earlier and if they have underlying medical conditions such as hypertension or cardiac disease, these should be managed. Whenever these are present, it does obviously increase the risk. A person who's experienced recurrent episodes of IPE should probably refrain from diving again in the future. So what is it that we don't understand about IPE? In what way is it still a mystery? Bouvet. Well, the mechanisms themselves are not well understood. The phenomenon of negative pressure pulmonary edema is well known in anesthesia and likely contributes to IPE in divers. The development of pulmonary edema in swimmers is better understood and has a model in well-known pulmonary edema produced in highly motivated racehorses. However, there's still a number of divers and swimmers who get it without us having any good explanation for why. Ebersol. Despite the best efforts of many investigators, the medical community does not know that much about IPE. Until we better understand the mechanism of the disorder and who is predisposed to it, it's difficult to make recommendations to divers on how to avoid it or when to return to diving after an episode. Wetucky. 
The cause, hmm, we don't know what causes IPE, nor can we currently predict which people will be at risk of developing it. We know how to identify and treat it. We know the disease involves fluid leaking out of the capillaries into the alveoli, but we don't know exactly why it occurs and hope that research that is currently underway will eventually answer this question and lead us in the right direction. In closing, research is ongoing and Dr. Richard Moon of Duke Center of Hyperbaric Medicine and Environmental Physiology, in collaboration with Dan, is currently conducting research on IPE. The goal of the study is to identify susceptible individuals using various methods to prevent the condition.